Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Do You Know the Lessons of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. As you probably know by now, what is this, the ninth video in the series? But right now, we are finishing up Eyes to the Horizon. The Lufafa was always the big man's personal army. His banded knights and their men-at-arms, ready to take to the air whenever the Reichsmarschall felt like reliving his glory from the Great War. They are far too politicized, but it's hard to deny that Big Daddy Goring did an excellent job of building them up to become the world's premier air force. Without them, we would never have bombed the British into submission or strafed the Red Army to pieces. It's difficult to say how much of a threat they present compared to the Hare. Luftwaffe command is still packed with Goring's hand-picked men, but they are more concerned with their own rank and pay than ideology. The Big Daddy believes that appeasing them would be no trouble at all, though it might hinder the professionalization of the Luftwaffe rank and file, on the other hand. OKW is eager to see Goring's appointees forced into retirement to make way for a new generation of disciplined, apolitical, young, handsome officers. Which path would Seth best serve our Reich? Uh, so I'm looking over here. Actually, there was one comment, saying, or a couple comments saying that yesterday that this is more the reformist one, the social market, compared to the social state. We'll probably choose this one when we go conservative. But for now, I think we're doing relatively okay. And we're going to do Old Glory. With light stuff, which wouldn't be too bad. Knights of the Sky look really cool. But this one gives you more weekly manpower, more daily political power, which would be super cool to do, but we're doing no more favors. The Luftwaffe is a corrupt and self-serving institution, far removed from the respectable and valiant air force found in the wake of the Great War. They claim paramount importance in the hierarchy of the Reich, yet they have done little more than bomb defenseless Russian villages for the past decade. They're not what they should be, and pale in comparison to the might of the United States Air Force, their main rival. The day of reckoning has come for Goring's gang of preening officers and desk jockeys. We shall pick apart the Luftwaffe from the top down, trimming the fat and cutting out the rot until we have a loyal and professional air force. If every fat, worthless disciple of the Reichsmarschall has to be retired in prison or put against a wall and shut, well, c'est la vie. Oh, that's going to suck. Oh, we only get almost three political parts. Okay, I'm okay with that then. New skies for old eagles. The Luftwaffe was one of the main protagonists in the war that saw the Reich triumphant. From the Battle of England to the scouring of the Soviet Union, Messerschmitts, Snukas, Heinkels, and many, many more became the bane of these foolish enough to oppose the Axis. Even with everything that happened after the end of the war, the Luftwaffe remains the proudest of the armed forces of the Reich. This knowledge, however, is of little con comfort. The German Air Force was a personal playground of him and Fat Man Goring, the man responsible for the current decadence of the Reich, and a large number of officers owe their rank to him, despite his defeat. Its political clout is, is still present, and take time and effort to remove it for, before any real reform can be passed without mass desertions or worse. Goring's influence, however, was limited to the officers, but it covered even the doctrinal aspects of air combat. As of now, our air fleet is heavily unbalanced towards long-range bombers, a result of decade-long bombing campaign over Russia and Western Africa. And even worse, due to the gargantuan cost of running such a meaningless operation, there weren't enough funds to develop new airframes to keep with the current new discoveries. As a result, the Luftwaffe is extremely outdated in both doctrines and equipment, despite its large numbers, and will most likely perform with abysmal results against any modern for air force of the world. Mein Gott, what did Hermann do to the Luftwaffe? He probably ate them. We have a lot of factories. Oh, the couple comments, um, someone said, if Hitler was alive, he would have hated Speer and what he would have done right now? Probably, yeah. Let's see. Social market was more of the reformist sides, which we already addressed. Um, and the focus right here, we have Netzram, which someone said this is basically trying to figure out how to do the internet stuff, or create the internet. So that's kind of cool. And someone was asking, how did we get 100% regime stability? That's because, as someone else did say, our population is mostly reformist leaning now. Actually, actually, they're, they're actually pretty strongly reformist leaning. Overwhelmingly reformist pivot. So that's how come we have 100% re regime stability. Which would be dependent, but also, like I said, I did get Serbia with us now, so Italy, or their own pact, isn't looking super great, so. Honestly, Ironhide's pact, looking not too bad. We got Norway, Ireland, all of France with Brittany. Um, we got almost all the Balkans, minus uh, Croatia and Albania. But yeah, honestly, not too shabby, I'd say so. Um, also, off screen, uh, because it's 1969, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, I've been just rushing through, trying to get spending 5 pp every single time investing in each one of these areas just because I know the oil crisis is going to hit us hard like really hard so I want to make sure we can get that done before uh, get all the corporations dismantled before that hits so but for now home sweet home the brisk air chill through Marcelli's worn coat. When the Germans gave it back to him three months ago, they clearly hadn't taken good care of it the past few years. A few Reichsmarks would have served him well, but to the surprise of no one, he only made enough to buy himself the barest amount of food possible. As a thin and worried frame entered through the door of his office, he could hear the rolling of the train engine and a whistle at the top as it came to a stop. There to picking up more of his kin, but not him, he had something to resolve. Mr. Vogel, Marcelli asked, seeing the older German sitting in his chair, writing something off a 
Off perk and eyebrow? Uh, hey, uh, his pulse was rusty as he looked up. What is the problem? Marcelli took a deep breath. Mr. Vogel, yesterday they came to light about my planned destination to where I would permanently relocate to Krakow? He asked, already feeling some st some of his anger boiling, but he kept it in. Sure, this is a mistake. I was born in Gdansk. For a second pause, did the German man look at him before sighing and shaking his head? Danzig. Marcelli's frown became laced with irritation. Is Greater German Reich territory. You are located to the biggest pole city because it is a similar urban environment. Marcelli's uh, heart leaped to his throat. That's ridiculous. Gdansk is my home more than any other city, even if that isn't within the borders of Poland itself. He began already clutching his hands into fists subconsciously. Where can I ask for a transfer? You? Vogel asked. Uh, Vogel looked at him like he was a fool. Ask? Blinder Dumkampf. Wie sagt man das nochmal? Ah! His uh, gaze suddenly sharpened, and Marcelli felt stricken with fear. These were the eyes of a man who had gone through this before, hadn't he? Please, Mr. Bogle, word of advice, desperation clawed in Marcellus, just find your belongings, get to your train, it departs in 15 minutes, and use Danzig, modern spelling. <laughs> Diplomacy in the wasteland. Is this Old World Blues? One of the greatest victories of the past decades was not only the destruction of the cancerous heart of Bolshevism in the form of the Soviet Union, but also the annihilation of the unified state concept in Russia and its colonies. Never again would the Slav dare build a state to rival the might of the Reich in the absence of the strict authoritarianism of successive governments. The illiterate Russian peasant would revert to his base instincts of violence and raiding for any meaningful future, or at least, so he thought, joining the first Fuhrer and the dismissal of the Russians. Then came the West Russian War, and while officially we swatted the Bolshevik hordes aside with ease, in reality the state was severely weakened by the conflict and integrity of our eastern lands was considerably compromised even up to this day. Now the specter that the conflict rears its ugly head again, while we ex long expected there to be some sort of unification attempt between the unorganized warlords of European and Russia and Western Siberia following the suspension of our punitive air raids during the Bürgerkrieg, an unexpected development was the reformation of the Siberian states that collapsed in the 50s, thanks to a combination of foreign interference and refurbished Soviet industry. Now Russia has been rapidly coalescing into two power blocks faster than what any analyst thought possible, and what's worse, they appear to be engaging in diplomacy with each other. A reunified Russia cannot be allowed to happen, while we would of course win any potential conflict. The cost of lives, money, and damage to our Reich's commissariats would easily be prohibitive. We must direct our intelligence services to sabotage our diplomatic efforts. How hard could it possibly be? Uh, I'll do this one. Were we supposed to bomb that? General Spado, working with the R&D, has brought some very interesting reports to the Fuhrer's attention. Reports that, quite contrary to previous ones, do not paint the Luftwaffe as bomber command in positive light. For years, they flew missions over Russia, bombing anything resembling a city or factory or military base. But that's not all. Previously suppressed community keys have revealed unauthorized targeting of native communities throughout Eastern Europe. God knows how many have been turned against the Reich by these missions, or how much harm they've done to the RK administrations. The motive behind these attacks remain unclear to us, although the R&D suspects SS infiltration with the goal of fostering chaos in the streets, or in the East. A very thorough investigation into this possibility is in order, especially with our new friendly policies towards the peoples of Europe. If Himmler has his fingers in the airports, he's about to lose them. About to lose his fingers. Chop chop. Uh, that's looking pretty good. And down here. I guess we, we should, probably should do this one. Send a demand to the government of Madagascar, demanding the return of the islands. Wait, does Rex come start? Oh, Madagascar actually won! Maurice is still here! Isn't he part Jewish? Anyways, um, no wonder he's in Madagascar. Mm, anything here? Yes, yes, infrastructure, yes. I think the great game is finally done, so I'm kind of glad about that. Ah, they've been returned. The ultimatum sent to Madagascar proved to be sufficient, and the Kriegsmarine vessels are already sailing to the island's ports to ensure the lawful transfer of power in the region and the restoration of our authority. As expected, the price of their control proved to be too steep for the fight petty fiefdom of Madagascar to stomach. When the reply was not made readily quickly enough, an incoming flyover of the island by our bomber served to catalyze a fast response. As of right now, reprisals are planned, but... We are working to ensure that sufficient control of the islands and the surrounding waters are achieved first so as to avoid any last-minute complications. Even as we are past the point of armed resistance, we intend to avoid the possibility of further issues arising. Though ownership of Madagascar and its islands is important to the dominance of those southern seas, the true fruit of this endeavor is the public image of a once rebellious lion willfully submitting to the rightful rule of our administration. What could have possibly been a disastrous military conflict has been instead been transformed into an example of the statesmanship we embody. Hopefully we will not need to make a similar example for some time. Heim in Reichs. Heim in Reich. Cool. So we get the islands back, which is actually really cool. Let's see. Can we actually throw civvies on them? That's all. That's literally the only reason why I want them. Civvies. There you go. And as you can tell from our construction, I've run out of things to build. I've actually started um, converting some of our military factories to civvies to make save some money, even though it doesn't save us money at all because, well, nuclear cost. Honestly, personal cost is not very much. Production cost is 10 billion, which is quite a bit, but whatever. Uh, anything here yet? We do have 30. Um, I've been really trying to cut down this one first. Even though it might be better to do these areas for now. I just want to get rid of this stuff. 
I think I might do this one first, just because, like, we can get rid of the Reichsvac as fast as possible. There you go. This, as you can see, it doesn't do very much. But we have the political power, and I just want to get through this as fast as possible. Yeah, that's a, that, oh, that was a really good dip we had there. So, I hope we can get that done. I really do. Anything else? Oh, bug political. Oh, propaganda. Oh, you know what? We don't need to do this anymore, but you know, whatever. We'll do it anyways, because we can. Propaganda, max it out. Once we get a 500, I think we'll be maxed out completely, so that'd be pretty good. Anything else down here? Disappear reactions. I'd love to do that, but we have less than 10% support for the NSDAP, which sucks. Cool. A simple test. Oh, not bad. Yeah, I'll do that one. The declining quality of the hair has been known for a long time, but the Luftwaffe didn't escape the stagnation born of the final victory over the Allies. It seems that owing to a, to a shortage of recruits, Luftwaffe command repeatedly slackened their training standards for new pilots. This has bred a generation of men who might know how to fly a plane, but not the proper conduct for missions or the higher responsibilities. To be sure, there remains many skilled and dedicated men in the rank and file, but they are swamped by the incompetent and undeserving. We are not uncaring bureaucrats or savage, or savage Himmlerites, so we can, shall go about this the proper civilized way. An exam to be taken by every single member of the Luftwaffe, from the highest general to the men who sweep the hangars. If they can't even get the, this right, then it's time to show them the door. Nice. Eberhard Raumfahrer Kölner. Eberhard Kölner sounds familiar. Sigmund Ma Sandmachen Yen. Jan. Yes. Totally speak. It's been too long since I've actually taken German courses. There you go. It's not very much, I know, but it's something, man. It's something. Oh, wait. Can we dismantle this yet? No, we can't. Okay. Yeah, it sucks. We need more command power. Hey, let's see. Bennett has been elected again. Stagnation is a death of a nation. I want to play Bennett badly. But I'm waiting for Toolbox Theory. Then again, I waited to, for Toolbox Theory to come out to play Spare. But it's not out yet at the time of this recording. But the sources of the Luftwaffe's unusually high paying pensions are an open secret. Goring certainly had a talent for managing the dirty side of finance. He spent years pouring the state's wealth, the people's wealth, directly into the pockets of his favorite officers. That's to say nothing of the gifts and benefits that every man above a certain rank enjoys currently. Such prolific prolificacy has no place in a regime. Soldiers, regardless of the rank of personal status, have to earn their pay the same as any other professional. A thorough audit into the Luftwaffe's budget will be conducted and any discrepancies investigated to the maximum possible extent. There will be no more special relationship between the state and any of its institutions. Five political powers isn't too much. Reichsvecker must be dismantled. Take off. With the modernization efforts of the Wehrmacht in full swing, the Luftwaffe has been granted all the needed funds and personnel to develop new, improved aircraft to press into service as soon as possible. However, an airplane is much more complicated than a gun or tank, and even the testing process reflects this. Once the research department has finalized the proposed designs, the testing truly begins with flight tests. In this phase, unfortunate pilots are put at the helm of what can range from a perfectly functional jet fighter to a flying coffin only waiting to close itself on the poor sod. Takeoff accidents, on-air engine failures, sudden airframe detachments, and many, many more. The list of the problems experienced by testing pilots is only as long as the list of the causes of their death. And many promising aviators have met their untimely end just because of because the one in charge of development forgot a factor a zero, or to put a comma where it was needed. That's pretty bad if you don't remember your math. Yes, uh, that's actually really bad. Still, no one can deny the results of this tear-filled process are extremely promising. And so the airships of the military airports across the right fill with strange, barely flying planes challenging the laws of physics with frames barely kept together with glue, thread, and fervent prayers of the pilots. I'm not boarding that thing. No, no, no. Well, honestly, this stuff doesn't even matter anymore. We already have 100% stability. I mean... That's, that's pretty good. And then, this is going to cost us more pee, pee but whatever, clear the skies. Corruption runs even deeper in the Luftwaffe than we thought. The vast majority of its officers were on Goring's payroll at some point, and a few have posing, proven their value in recent years. They spend their hours on the job the same way they do at home, lounging around on fine imported furniture, slipping cognac, and showing off the collection of undeserved medals. It's time for these preening peacocks were put out to pasture. There's no room in our new Luftwaffe for glory hounds and layabouts. They can keep their mansions, their medals, and pensions, but no more. No more black market goods purchased with estate funding. No more bits of gold for no effort. No more annual gifts from the big daddy himself. On to Nevin Kitson. I think I ended one episode doing this one. Wow, 100% chance. But I, I had to replay things, and I actually did another one, like the Decker Satellite. So, uh, we'll do this one again, which you can read that again if you want, but that's fine with us. Oh, and then we got to deal with these guys next. Oh, yeah. Um, How's Russia looking? Yeah, I mean, there's there's not two. There's four. I Technically five, but really just four. That's all right. Anything up here? No. Good. I just want to cut this down. It barely goes down, I know, I know. Maybe I just stop spending so much PP for this. That's this one's still worth doing though. That one's definitely worth still worth doing. And then soldiers like any other. 
The most difficult obstacle to overcome in dealing with the Lufbaba isn't their corruption or incompetence, it's their arrogance. The former Rex Marshal, with his constant praising and grooming, fostering a sickening self-serving cult of aviation that's politicized the Lufbaba and alienated them from the rest of the Wehrmacht. In order to truly bring them to heel, we must access his tumor. The notion that the Luftwaffe is inherently superior due to its political ties will be debunked for good. All favoritism will come to an end and the conduct of the Luftwaffe is subjected to biannual review until the government is satisfied with the performance. Hey, armored professionals, can you continue to go up? Please get some more daily command power. We need more war sport. The eagle tamed. By hook or crook, we have tamed Goring's pet eagle. They now fly for the Reich, not his. Finally, the core of our global power projection is back under the fierce control, no longer buck at every other order we give them. With this accomplished, we possess the means to defend our ground forces from airstrikes, carry out search and destroy operations against insurgents, and should the need arise, launch nuclear strikes without the use of ICBMs. Though we pray the day will never come, we can at least be thankful that the Japanese and Americans no longer hold a certain advantage against us in the air. Yeah, where is this one? Reforming the Lufthansa? Oh, so go... Oh, oh, what are we losing here? So, actually, we don't lose any more political power after we get that one done. Not bad. Not too bad, actually. And we got one more here, maybe. No, no. Oh, there's 12th, 12th decision here. No, I don't see anything. Weird. Um, yeah, nothing here. Hide, hide. Nope, we're good. I'm still not doing military investments. Uh, that, the growth keeps going down, which is not very good. Deficit's massive, though. Titan, the inter-branch cooperation. An unforgivable flaw in the Wehrmacht's conduct during the last war was the inter-service rivalry. While never escalating the insanity one hears of the Japanese, the constant bickering of the three branches stymied efforts during the Rus West Russian War to effectively deal with a Bolshevik threat. Before that, the Luftwaffe listened to the Reichsmarschall rather than the OKW when it pleased them, while the Kriegsmarine was happy to ignore any and all going-ons that didn't occur at sea. Add the access to the mix in, one might wonder how we even won the Second World War at all. The independence of the, of the Wehrmacht's branches must be reduced a little, and all three sections of the OKW conveniently or convene regularly. Every member of the High Command needs to be fully aware of what his counterparts are doing at any given time. This way, the Wehrmacht can avoid any complications born of professional pride and sense of secrecy. Every one of us, from the humble infantryman to the Reichsmarschall himself, has a responsibility to do his duty above all else. There is no room for self-aggrandizement in the Reich's armed forces. Good. Very nice. Very, very good. Uh, we can get back here. I'm, I'm going to kill this group off first. That's the goal. It's only 5 PP, but it doesn't really do much, but... This one's Oh, we're so close. Uh, yeah, this one, definitely. Alright, anything else here? I'd like to get more, like I said, war support, but there's nothing really here that gives us more war support. I just I just want to get this done before the uh, oil crisis starts. The Reich's Glory, uh, German Wehrmacht. Uh, the, oh, the Reich's OKW. Um, total? Speer's OKW. Indecisive, ineffective, derailed. The Führer's Wehrmacht. Uh, that's weird. Why is, it, why is the conservative side on the right side now? Usually the reformist is on the right side. The German Wehrmacht. The Reich's OKW. Herr Speer must accept that the OKW is not his to meddle with any longer. Hitler's constant shuffling of commands, sackings of disfavored generals, and promotion of the undeserving almost led to ruin more than once. Had the war turned against us at any point, his interference would have proven utterly disastrous. Speer has to understand this and back down from his claims to authority over the OKW's and no workings. He can continue c being commander-in-chief, but his political games are selfish, reckless, and detrimental to our success. We serve the Reich, not its leader. Kneeling to Hitler tore our martial brotherhood apart. We that must never be permitted to happen again. Um, at this point, I'm going to save some of her PP. I don't mind doing this one, because this one's actually really good. Um, this one, not so much. We're going to save her PP, because we're going to lose, like, 75 more, which sucks. But whatever. Alright, it's, it's 69. Very nice. We like 69 here. Um, there you go. I guess I forgot to do that stuff too. But we do get 1.2.82, which is actually a whole bunch, which is really nice, actually. Can I make more civvies, please? I've actually made civvies in, like, random locations all around, like, these guys, so... Yeah, it's weird. Mm. No? I don't know. Hide generic stuff? Not bad. Uh, yeah, just keep going this one down. There you go. Oh, point eight, point eight. Come on, man. A five billion. Jesus Christ. IG Falvin is way too influential. All right, we should have this one done very soon. There you go. Air House demands minimum wage. Crap, Air Hard. Why? Hey, another one done. Great. Please, 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 please. Middling. Good, good, good. Speer scratched his chin and looked sideways again at the proposal later on the desk. I don't understand, Herr Erhard, he said into the receiver. I thought economics didn't like the idea of minimum wages. Why are you advocating for them? Erhard's voice, even though the phone was coarse, bold, and full of pomp. 
We aren't unified in that position, my fear. Indeed, I think it's probably essential to further your economic recovery. The fear began tapping one finger on his desk. A nervous tick he'd acquired from the many heated debate he had with Erhard. Well, Herr Erhard, I do respect your expertise, but if you're in the minority, that makes your position unstenuous. That's to say nothing of what the industrial leaders will think of it. The industrialists? Speer could hear the sarcasm coming. Oh, I'm sure, mein Führer. I'm sure the industrialists of the men who've grown rich from not having to pay the workers at all have a far more well-considered perspective on this than your hand-picked economic minister. Spare me, Erhard, Speer said. Just explain your reasoning. The old man wastes no time. As long as we lack a minimum wage, we face a twofold problem first. The people won't have any confidence in the jobs being offered to them. Why go looking for work when it'll barely make a difference to your income in the first place? Second, right now our economy needs to be shifting goods, and that can't happen if a consumer lack purchasing power. Follow through with this plan, and you'll see the difference is in mere weeks. Speer's fingers stopped. The logical sound, but what would the corporations think? Surely they knew a thing or two about economics if they posed it so stringently. They could be some mere to their arguments. Thank you, Herr Erhard, he replied after a few moments. I'll consider your proposal. Has it been wrong yet? Um... Uh, uh, I guess we'll go with this one. I mean, it seems like reform stuff. We lose max factories in a state? Why? I mean, poverty gets better, industrial expertise gets better, but... Uh, why? Why do you pay me so? <laughs> a game of war. As part of the new interbranch coordination efforts, a large war game has been organized in Danzig. A suitable location, a hill surrounded by a small forest near the coast, has been labeled enemy fortification, and subsequently equipped with bunkers, tents, and mock emplacements containing old machine guns and artillery pieces. Have they given a uh, <clears throat> signal? The combined might of the Wehrmacht was unleashed upon the unfortunate Earth Mound. The Kriegsmarine opened fire upon the enemy positions, neutralizing anti-air batteries and grievously damaging several other emplacements. Immediately after, bombers from the Luftwaffe dropped their deadly cargo upon the trenches, anti-tank cannons, and machine guns, clearing the way for the hail. Tanks strolled towards the target, and infantry, both motorized and on foot, followed in their wake to occupy the objective. Thanks to the radio coordination, there were no instances of friendly fire, and the entire operation was declared a success. For the entire time, Henning von Trusko looked with a satisfied expression at the scene unfolding a few hundred meters from his command tent. Several other members of the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, generals, aviators, and even a couple of Kriegsmarine officers were present, were present, all murmuring their approval for how the army reforms were having their desired effect. The Prussian general let himself a smug smirk. Everything was going as planned. The hell offered its unconditional surrender at 1746. Very cool. A German Wehrmacht. Germans, not Aryans. Servants, not subjects. Soldiers, not warriors. We are the Wehrmacht, the greatest military the world has ever known. We walk in the footsteps of a European martial tradition dating back thousands of years, and we will not be led astray by ideology. The citizen is not the race. The nation, not the party. The ideal is not the ideology. Never again will we, the, we be the tools of an overmighty megalomaniac. Let the fear grumble and the NSD be called disloyal. Only the nation and its people are worthy of it anyway. Erhard's demands minimum wage. I told you this would happen, Speer snapped, waving a fistful of indignant letters in Erhard's face. See? All these from Reichsweck has made your shareholders. That's not all. I, either. IG uh, Farben has had the board members calling me all morning demanding to know what we're up to. They'd have, they'd have been happier if, they, if I declared myself a communist. Erhard waited for the fear to quiet down and leaned back in the chair. What about the common man, my fear? What does he think? What about your students or your supporters in the Reichstag? Speer looked mortally offended for a brief moment before gritting his teeth and responding. The Reich doesn't operate according to the wishes of the mob. I understand the dangers that kowtowing to the corporations possesses, but... Oh, bad word, the corporations, bellowed Erhard, shooting upright with hands placed on the table, nearly biting his cigar in two. Do you even honestly think they have the Reich's interest at heart? They've grown fat on the profits that slavery offers. Our economic situation is at least 50% their fault exclusively. If they haven't been given carte blanche on German industry and put in a position to back your opposition, you wouldn't have faced such stiff resistance in the first place. For the most powerful dictator on earth, Speer suddenly felt very small. Don't raise your voice too. Erhard's next words cut to the bone. Dear, our dear friend, Benito, once said that to make a people great, you have to send them into battle even if you need to kick them in the pants. The same is true even for a fear. If you know what's best for Germany and its people, you'll need my advice and not that of some, uh, some bloated psychopathic slave driver. Good day, Herr Speer. I can't risk his policy. Of course, a fear doesn't need he corporate parasites. Yeah, we're not a puppet. Totally not a puppet. Totally not. I'm just waiting for this so we can do more stuff here. 25, 25. 26, 26. Minimum wage. So, Speer was selling as a mute. He pulled over the variety of newspapers, surveys, and financial reports laid out on the desk. Vienna retailers enjoy biggest boom since 1938. Read one headline. Haji Fabin reports major quarterly losses, said another. You should have had more faith in Erhard, mein Führer. Kiesinger's inoffensive voice cut through the fog of Speer's thoughts, prompting him to glance up. The deputy Führer was relaxed and cheerfully looking, not to mention entirely too correct in his assessment to yell at. The party's economists are all too politicized or corrupt to stand up for what the Reich and his people's need. I suppose, Speer grumbled, going back to his reading, he's not the one who's been dealing with the backlash from executives and shareholders, though. Kiesinger leaned back onto his desk, hands folded, to get Speer's attention again. Isn't that a pr price worth paying? Isn't having a few angry men to put in a line a lot better than having the entire working class starve because 
because they continue to live off the state's loose change? The fear felt a little less tense suddenly, but he was careful not to show it. Yes, well, yes it is. I suppose we'll feel the political repercussions for some time yet, though. He downed the last survey and looked straight at Keys and go. Just tell him to wait a few months at a minimum before bringing something so radical to my desk again. If only he'd listen. Well, get more political power, which is nice. Not too worried about stability. We can always get more of that, so that's nice, but... Mm, it's not great, obviously. But, since we did that, I don't mind doing this. Just a little bit more. There you go. It's not great, obviously, but... Whatever. I just wanted to smell It's already April. Uh, yes. Civilian stuff, yes. Lots and lots of synthetic oil. Um, regime stability is probably really good. Yep, 100%. Look at that. We even have more civvies. Uh, we can't get a nuclear rack. How, what if... What if we blew up Poland with nuclear reactors? We made a nuclear Poland. Is that a smart idea? Probably not. But that's okay. How about a nuclear Ukraine? I think that was tried sometime, right? Probably not a great idea, but we're doing it anyways because we love nuclear power here. And if things go bad in the east, well, we're taking the rest of the world with us. A nuclear muscadine. Oh, oh, yeah, we still need more PP, though. Oh, there we go, 30, nice. A veritable attack patterns, very nice, very nice. There you go. Do that one. Not bad. There's only four regions left, so it's only 20 political power every single time, so it's not too bad, but still. Good, good, good. We're gonna lose, actually, we're gonna lose that 75 uh, political power anyways, but whatever. It's alright, we lost 5% stability, but we have enough anyways for it. And, thank you. Followed up with what? Token speeches, military investment, whatever. Ready for modern warfare. We are the Wehrmacht. In decades past, we defeated every foe who dared to face us. The British, French, Poles, Russians, Americans, none stood against us in battle and triumphed. A momentary weakness could never bring us down, we have demonstrated it. Time will tell the legacy we have fought so hard to secure will indeed prove invincible. Though we have not yet been bested in battle, the future is never certain. Only one fact can be stated with certainty. The day will come when we are tested. When that occurs, we must stand tall, stand proud, and show the world that Germany is worthy of its mantle. Yes, please. I think that's what we want. Nice. Well, we could do this, but uh, we do get some more fascist support, which we don't really need, honestly. That's not too bad. Alright, make just a little bit more, make just a little bit more. Looking not too bad there. Over here's not great. A little better. Alright, so that's the Wehrmacht fully reformed. Everything over here reformed. Oh man, what in my list I had? Uh, a phony proposal. Our attempts to create mistrust between the US and Australia have finally borne fruit. The two countries do not have a long and adverse history, so it was not incredibly easy to get the two at each other's throats. However, eventually our operatives derived a plan that utilized the lack of a strong bond between the two countries against them. American desire for the return of the lost territory is well known, as is Australian fear of Japanese fear, which sits on the doorsteps. As such, we crafted a document that contained an American plan in which the U.S. would let the Japanese induct Australia into the sphere, in exchange for the return of Hawaii and the treaty ports, naturally. Because this proposal never occurred, we said it was simply rejected, not mentioning by whom. The plan was released under the guise of the American whistleblower, and was immediately met with condemnation for most members of the OFN, Australia chief among them. While America strongly denies any part in drafting this plan, it is unlikely that this denial will be enough to convince the Australian government. How quickly the Yanks betray their allies. Uh, I want to save these two for last. I don't remember. It's either the diplomacy one here, um, or we'll do Netzram. Let's see. Oh, that's not bad, not bad. Oh, we lose political power. We lose weekly manpower. Uh, Deutsch Praxis Tauschlichkeit. It's not terrible. Not bad, not bad. Um, needs of the producers. Construction technology. Oh, that's a lot of pee pee. Mm hmm. See that or US. I heard the U.S. diplomacy one is actually very good to do, but it does cost quite a bit of political power, I think. Brown Eminence. That's 50 political power. That's 50 political power. That's 100. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, so we get more stability, which doesn't even matter. We get some political power returned there. Two giants together again. More rights for slaves. Well, we are not the sins of the sun. I feel like Albert Speer has never done anything wrong. He never involved himself with the ugliness which Hitler got himself into. Unlike him, Anu Führer desires to make things right. This is what we believe, and that this is what the world should do. This is his way, and therefore our way of setting ourselves apart from the legacy of our fathers. Which would be very good to do. Oh, look at that. Way more stuff here. One, two, three. There we go. Let's do Western Russia. Yeah, let's do them. That'd be really good to do. 100% chance of this going well. 
Uh, R&D agents will be sent to infiltrate West Russia, gaining intel on the ruler of that region. Once they've gathered intel on the situation, they'll begin sabotaging infrastructure in the region, hopefully slowing down the unification process. Probably a really good idea to do. Wehrmacht Rabon. The Wehrmacht has experienced dramatic changes in the last few months under the leadership of von Francesco and his cadre of reformist officers. The armed forces of the Reich have been thoroughly cleansed of any political interference and purged of most disloyal, corrupt, or incapable officers. What was once a ragtag band of mercenaries and unfit recruits has returned to its former glory, and now reflects the Prussian spirit of the adoptive father in all its facets. The Hale is now in perfect state, with modern doctrines, improved equipment, and fully functional logistics, like a tiger coiled and ready to spring towards its intended prey. The Luftwaffe is the undisputed ruler of the skies across the entire of Europe, its modern fleet of fighters, interceptors, and bombers ready to teach those foolish enough to attack the right to the depth of their mistake and hubris. The Kriegsmarine is now a force to be reckoned with, fully stretched to dominate the seas and oceans, nimble frigates, working together with the powerful cruisers and menacing carriers in perfect unison. It's probably frigates. While the conservatives grumble about losing influence over the Wehrmacht, no one can deny that now that the Reich, the Reich has returned to the world stage in full panoply of war. Even the Führer can't help but smug, a smug smile when looking upon the result of the reforms he had allowed. Perhaps von Chesko was right after all. Not that he would even admit that, of course. Raise the Balkan cries. Nice. There's just too many slaves. Hey, that's better than 1%. Nice. It's getting slightly better, slightly better. Slightly better. Not that much better, but slightly better. We still get three political power a day. Holy crap. And Hitler was corrupted. Speer now faces a painful decision. To further father foster friendly relations with the U.S., it must be proven to the Americans that Speer is not the same Führer as Hitler before. A painful and scathing action to take, given Speer's close relationship with the late Adolf Hitler. The Americans, however, are unlikely to positively receive us otherwise, given their intense vilification of the late daddy. Yet it only proves suspicious to the German people for the Führer to publicly distance himself from the great revered Hitler. However, there are other ways to draw distance between Speer and Hitler without the pains of public denouncement. No matter how great, all men are susceptible to corruption by those who surround them, and Hitler was by no exception. A great man who accomplished great things. He was swayed over the long years following the Reich's triumph by those surrounding him. Himmler, Hedrich, Goring, Bormann, all of them traitors and corrupt men who expanded all waking hours in their efforts to seize the Reich for themselves. Perhaps the recently defeated Bormann and Goring, long-time advisors to the late Führer, can be blamed for Hitler's worst impulses, as well as any other qualities the Americans are not too fond of. Gebrochenefeil Authoreda Geheim Approximately an hour ago, one of our early warning radar stations at Wilhelmshaven reported the disappearance of an Iceland-based American B-52 bomber. The bomber was being tracked as it was on a standard patrol over neutral waters in the Norwegian Sea. It is believed that the aircraft has mostly likely crashed into the ocean with the fate of the crew currently unknown, according to the analysis in the OKL technical office. It is highly likely that such an aircraft would be carrying at least one American thermonuclear device. Given that such a device would have landed in neutral waters, we would be within our rights to claim it as salvage. If we obtained it first, such a discovery would yield critical insights into the American nuclear weapons program, and perhaps even give us a technical edge. Additionally, the blow to American prestige would be enormous, especially if the crew members survived and were rescued by us. We recommend that you authorize a naval, air, naval and air detachment be sent at once. Let's go get that bomb, which actually would be really good, because um, we can test out the Kriegsmarine and the Luftwaffe. Uh, let me see. I think I didn't do this one yet. Uh, did I do this one yet? No, I did not. Oh, my bad. Uh, a couple days ago. There you go. There you go. Cool. Um, nice. And then Hitler was corrupted still. We still need to do this one, so. And what is this one? We he was. We are not complicit. I get more stability, but we don't really need that. The Gilded Marshal lose 150 PP. A new Reich. And then this one gives you 50. So you lose 100 PP. Mm, we can't really do that. I mean, that's a lot of PP. Um... I don't mind maybe doing Netzeram first, even though this is really good to do. Um, anything else here yet? Not really, no. We need this one, but IG-5 is going to take a while to get rid of. I don't maybe start doing this one, perhaps. This one's interesting. There's a chance it will get a research slot. Maybe. Um, honestly, I don't mind this one because you get bonuses to technology and it's... Okay, we got to do this one. Nuwa Air der Wissenschaft. Sadly, the last decade has seen the Reich fall behind other world powers under all aspects. And technology has been no exception. If we were to truly bring Germany into a new age, we desperately need to invest the research and development of cutting-edge in innovations and inventions. Despite our considerable experience, we'll never be able to reclaim our place at the top if we can't put it to good use. As the fields of engineering and electronics seem to be the new frontier of technological advancement, we shall create a public agency tasked with subsidizing old and new companies with the know-how needed to produce and develop computers and the programs the Reich will be at the forefront of innovation once more. Very good. And we're at 350, so that actually might be the last one we need for this stuff. And we're still doing stuff over here too, which is totally fine. He was corrupted. Oh. Oh, the Americans let us pass. 
Gaheim, after a series of tense back channel discussions between American officials and representatives of our government, we have reached a settlement. The American government has agreed to allow our flotilla to enter the Norwegian Sea and salvage a B-52 and nuclear weapon provided that we leave any surviving crew alone. This is a massive coup for us, providing new insight into American avionics and nuclear weapons technology. Our aircraft and vessels already approaching the likely wreckage site. Within the next several days, the Reich will have triumphed in the standoff without firing a shot. Magnificent news. We don't get any PP. That sucks. Why do we not get any political power from that? That would actually be one of the few times where I think we really should get some PP. Eh, sucks, but whatever. One of these is about to go up as well. Expertise will go up, which is nice. Um, and I think we just gotta keep doing this one. That's not too bad. Yeah, this stuff, we don't have the PP for it. We really don't. This one? I say we don't have the PP, but we're doing it anyways. Ah. I can see we need more command power. We just need more stuff, period. Cool. And then, Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft. Ever since 1951, the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft, or German research community, has been subsidizing advanced research programs all around the Reich, bringing about many important innovations. However, the economic downturn and its subsequent collapse has resulted in large budget cuts, and now our scientists languish with no funds for the research. As the first step towards the scientific renaissance, we should bring back to life this fundamental institution of our scientific community, and give it all the funds it needs to operate at full efficiency. This will give our laboratories and universities a much needed boost until we can finally from the field, a new dawn for science, a new day for Germany. Nice. Yep, we're looking good there too. I really want to kill this one off at least. Kill it off, kill it off. These other stuff, I think we're going to have to kind of wait. Um, because there's just too many slides. This one we can maybe do a little bit as well. These two are going to do for right now. Lagging behind. The Reich's cancer lie was abuzz with activity even late late this late in the evening. As always, rebuilding the country from the ground up literally in this case was a gargantuan task and the entirety of the Reich's bureaucracy was hard at work to overcome the difficulties. An important meeting was happening in the Führer's personal office as Albert Speer was meeting the Minister for Innovation and Research and the directors of the surviving structures dedicated to the investment of science. The Civil War destroyed most institutions of higher learning and the few still in condition to work lacked funds and personnel. As the minister listed, all the problems and difficulties of the research sector the air became heavier and heavier. At one point, the Big Daddy Speer interrupted the barrage. Minister, please stop. Are we truly in such a state? Has the Reich really fallen behind so much? Please continue. Come with me, mein Führer. <clears throat> As the two moved up to the window, the minister pointed at the cars. Do you recognize them? And that was enough to answer. To his consternation, Speer saw the most, if not all, cars and trucks passing were Model 10s, if not more years old. Looking with more attention, he also noticed details he had missed when looking outside in the past weeks. Patrick reparations to the roads and sidewalks, electric cables hanging from scrambled together power lines, and public phones scattered because of people with no phone lines inside their homes. Or telephones. Right at that moment, as if it, that can... As if to confirm that, indeed, the situation was dire, all lights out went on in the office, and the surprise voices from outside the door made it clear that it was a great general blackout. The fear fumbled around his desk, suddenly dejected and sighed. Please resume your report, Minister. I'm sorry, my fear, but it's too dark to read. Need to the consumers. Goring and his cronies funneled most funds destined to the research towards his military projects, severely crippling advancements in all other fields. As the shadows of the Civil War dissipate, our people watch with envy at the commodities enjoyed by almost everyone in the U.S., Japan, and even Italy. In order to properly address this issue, we shall shift our focus back to the needs of the masses and provide them with the modern services and goods they can appreciate which will make their life easier. With enough time and effort, all of Germany will enjoy the fruits of our labor. And who knows, perhaps one day we'll be able to extend that living standard to the rest of the Reich? Let's hope so. A civil war is broken out into the shady sand, sandy mountainous oasis known as the Mutawakala Kingdom of Yemen, and it's in our interest to support the rebels fighting against a remote Arabian kingdom. The rebels are fighting for an Arab republic in the name of ideology called Ba'atism, which is a pan-Arab nationalist and pseudo-socialist movement whose ideological intricacies are very complex and complicated. What is important is that they are challenging Italian and Saudi influence in the oil-rich Gulf region, and factions of their movement are sympathetic to Germany. If we send aid to these Ba'atist rebels and they successfully topple the Italian lapdog of the monarch, we could see our own geopolitical influence and economic power expand. Cool. Oh crap, this costs oh no no no. Increase our commitment. Oh we oh we actually get some more command power. Drain fifty million US dollars from local reserves. The volume will go up even higher. Can we send you stuff? German bombing runs. It's not bad. And that's fifteen command power? Can we actually send you divi divisions? You know what we can. All right, well, I didn't think it would actually go back to war sometime here, but why not? I don't want to send tanks in there, you guys. This is, at least for me, a little unexpected. Yeah, I look like you're pretty good there. 
We don't like you, despotists. Authoritarian. De well, yeah. Democracy. You know what? Yes, please. That'd be good. And it costs 50 PP, but we're going to get more PP anyways. Let's spend this now. And let's increase our commitment. Technical support for them? Eh, we don't want to spend a PP there. This one, he nutrition reconnaissance. Schwert report. Unter If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. But. Ah. Eight R&D agents have successfully infiltrated the Ural military district. Agents informed the local garrisons about a fictitious railway worker revolt, distracting them. From there, they used smuggled dynamite to sabotage multiple railways and a few plastic, few arms plants. They then proceeded to meet at the extraction point for meetup. This should cause significant logistical issues for the government of West Siberia. A success in the snow. Nice. And West, uh, which one is this one? Flecton B. Ural military district. We just did that one. We probably want to do th this one. What's name in Vetrauen. Unfortunately, the Bürgerkrieg drew over necessary attention from the affairs of the warlord Russia, where Ivans used their time to eliminate their warlord competitors and organize themselves into several powerful states, threatening to unite and unleash their horde against the Vatalan once more. As long as we still entertain our influence in Siberia, we must prevent the Russian states from peaceful reunification. Through sabotaging the negotiations, sowing distrust between them, and turning warlords against each other, we can ensure that even if Russia reunites again, it'll be torn apart by internal struggles. Yes. Cool. Anything else here? Double check. Nope. Nope. Oh, stability. It's 97 and a half. It should go up anyway, so. Actually, because of that command power thing, I'm going to use it now right here. Thank you. Dismantled. That's why we do it. There's only three more left. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Actually, can we send any planes? A little bit of lag. That's alright with us. Did I get rid of all the planes? I guess I got rid of all the planes. Goodbye. Um, Attack helicopters. Wow. 2200 are pretty nice. Grab some fighters if we can. I can't believe we're actually going back to war. Oh, we're going to send 40. God dang it. Um, You too? Goodbye. Well, I guess send 20. Cool. Cool. Deploying, deploy, deploy, deploy. Oh, is it? Oh, then we can send up this match. Reichsvecca dismantled. There you go. Uh, Edmund Geilenberg enters the top office in the Reichsvecchaft's ministerium as the one who enters his home. As the head of the largest state-owned industrial conglomerate in the Reich, he held more power in his hands than the entire ministry put together. Inside that office, however, was someone who would be who would reverse the roles once and for all. The Reich's minister said Geilenberg's polite if but half tea salute. Well, that shot sphere was Ludwig Erhard's equally polite and equally haughty answer. I'm sure you already know the reason for your summon. You have too many contacts within my ministry to feign ignorance. Erhard immediately went to the point. Gallenberg nodded, distaste evident in his face, and that was enough. Look at that, wow. In light of the new economic policy, the Reichswerke is to be dismantled and its constituent companies restored as independent actors within the free market. Gallenberg had known the day would come, and for a moment his face contorted in anger. He was losing his power, his position, everything he had worked for and during after the war. However, he knew his position. He was no obs, but a functionary put there by the government to oversee a state-owned company. I understand I will obey my orders. It was his only answer, anger replaced by defeat. Ehad nodded curtly. Part of him had hoped for a bit more resistance, but Gallenberg was no fool. He was already calculating how to cut his losses, but, and by giving his acceptance, he had already secured his first point. The minister wasn't keen on doing this, but appearances needed to be saved. Thank you for your service to the Reich. You'll be assigned as chairman to one of the new companies. I'm sure you'll keep working hard for the good of the nation. Gallenberg nodded, his face neutral. Then the two shook hands in the form of Vervat Schausführer left Erhard's office. Another conglomerate ended, and more PP to celebrate with. Very good. So good. Research speed. Oh, we already got 1970 done. Nice. Oh, we're doing this one too. Nice. Very good. Things are a little bit ahead of time, but I don't really care. Construction-wise, probably not great. We should be able to win with air superiority, though. Look at all that. Look at all that blue. Oh, I love it. I'll take more command power. Oh, choose which country to support. What do you mean, choose which country? Hey, there we go. Not another one. What is this one? Five? Oh, send weapons to them. I'm not going to use any more command power. We just don't have the means to do it, so. It is unfortunate, but whatever. Where are the other planes? Or the helicopters, I guess, technically. My goodness, you take so long. Come on, chopper boys. There you go. Now we should be doing a little bit of damage. Very good, very good. We can go over there, but is anything else here yet? No? Gosh darn it. Needs of the consumers. Very good.
Hey, there we go. Nice. All right. Let's see what type of trouble we can cause around here. Otto Hensfield. These guys have been cut off, which is nice. I and mean, we can take all that land, but it doesn't really matter to us too much. All right. Let's see what happens. Well, I guess technically. Um, having them get cut off is probably not a good idea. Can we actually do that? Maybe. Oh no, we cannot. Oh, the Italians are there. Interesting. As soon as they leave, we're going to go in there. Oh, and Iberia's falling apart. Pretty normal. I'm not spending that. Um, nothing there, nothing there. Okay, cool. Also, there's something up here as well. All the way to the top. Nope. 100% regime stability, which is nice. Ooh. More command power. Authorize this stuff. General German bombs. Let the Italians leave. Strike groups are nice as well. Thank you. Anything else here? No. Hey. Thank you. We got him. <laughs> Alright. Need of the builders. The Bilgo Creek has destroyed much of our infrastructure and turned entire cities into rubble. Rebuilding our homeland into a fraction of what it was before will take an enormous amount of time and resources. Not everything looks grim, however, as the old saying goes, from great dangers come great opportunities. As our big daddy surely knows being an architect himself, the great need for new houses, offices, and infrastructure can be used to bring forth new advancements in the fields of construction materials and building methods, or even in architectural renaissance. The Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft shall oversee the distribution of new funds to companies and research laboratories willing to develop new technologies. And soon the scars left by the war will be mended by the healing power of solid, beautiful edifices. Absolutely. That's a lot of pee, pee This is not very good. Not very efficient at all, but what else can I do here? Haji Fallen. Ah, Republican victory. Yeah, very good. Uh, can we get involved here too, maybe? Yes. No. No. Uh, technically, we don't have them yet. I'm going to send air volunteers first, though. Even though we can't really send air volunteers. Okay. All right, whatever. Yes. 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 Um. Hmm. Do that one first. Look how much we're gonna have to invest in here. Holy crap! Yep, there goes the Iberian Wars. Goodbye, Iberia. <sighs> They're always falling apart. Yeah, doing this is just really not smart. But we don't have enough command power. Operation Tenda, some peacekeeping. Oh well. Now we just need those divisions back. Thank you very much. But from the KWG. Uh, back for 120 days, and then it'll be removed. Needs of the producers. As the civil war raged across the Vaterland, a grip on the Reichskommissariat loosened, and many of them facing revolts of their own refused to send resources to Germany. Of course, this resulted in mass shortages of vital materials, effectively crippling our industry, both civilian and military. As the embers of the war grow cold, and we have completely lost control over large parts of our colonial empire, and this is heavily damaging our producers. With the need of raw materials greater than ever, and the prospect of waging war to acquire them simply non-existent, we need to invest in research aimed at developing either synthetic materials to replace resources or we no longer have access to, or new extraction methods to fully exploit the resources found within our homeland. Can you do that again, please? I want more command power. What's the debt like? 11 oh, that's not great. Oh, that's so much deficit. Jesus Christ. This land is your land. It was 49 years old now, and things have changed significantly ever since that announcement two years ago. This transitionary period was marked with relative calm. The incidents where non-Germans would assault Germans was rare, and it only got rarer when rumors spread of what would happen to those who tempted fate towards their overlords. Having spent most of his waking days here, he knew it all inside out. That's how he also saw, bit by bit, how his fellow Polish workers were being phased out. At the very least, he knew this time around where they were going. Godfrey wasn't one of those highly disciplined Germans. He had come to learn, instead of being a volunteer for the Reich's program of encouraging them to move into less populated, more diverse cities, nearing the edge of the border, rather than staying inside overcrowded metropolises. If only he could visit one of them, but discussing these things with Godfrey served as one of the second best things. So Antonin, the German began, barely paying attention to the assembly line as he worked. Have you heard? No, Godfrey, I have not, Antonin responded. Fear spared the crude Polish slaves. Antonin went slightly before glaring at him, whose eyes widened in slight surprise as he nodded. I, um, uh, yeah, sorry. Workers will be allowed to, uh, in due time, leave their assigned job and return to the city that they were born in, or if they were born in a village, in the closest city to that village. Antonin could almost believe the words he was saying, causing him to fumble with the car parts in his hands for a moment, threatening the gaze of a nearby overseer before he readjusted and continued. I'm sorry, Godfrey, but I don't believe your government is so kind to do that. There's always something in it for them, he said, bitterness pouring in near, in near the end. I suppose that is... 
True, the German said, very warily, very hesitantly, but think about it. What does that mean for the future? Perhaps more liberties will be afforded to you at home? The thought of such a thing made Antonin chuckle. So, sure, Gottfried. When they eventually kick me, a man nearly 50, out of the factory, what will they make of me when I return to the city I don't belong in? As man, well past the point of usefulness, he asked. Gottfried began to open his mouth, but relented. There was nothing more to speak about this topic for today. Not until something happens, of course. Sure, because why not? Ah, they're not a port. Yeah, but I'm not going to send this stuff, man. That's, that's a waste of time for us. I'm just waiting for the guys to get back home. There we go. And now go again. Improved infantry rifles. Very good. So good. Support the universities. In the last grim decade, where the Reich was spiraling towards total collapse, the university stood as the last beacon for rationality and freedom of opinion in a world plagued by extremism and partisanship. On a more practical note, the universities were our main source of support, and thousands of university students served with distinction into volunteer militias, many of them dying in service to the Vatalam. As a way to commemorate the sacrifice of many young brave men and women, and ensure the light of progress isn't snuffed out completely in our slowly recovering country, we shall grant large funding to the universities, so that they'll be able to both rebuild their campuses and restart their quest for innovation. Very good. Anything else here? Da -da 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 -da. Yes. Yes. Research is completely done as well. Um. Yeah, well, that's nice. United. Oh, well. I don't want to spend that PP. I really don't. I really don't feel like it. Got some research, though. Uh, what was I thinking of? I was thinking of something here. Ah, uh, just that one. That's fine. Hey, yeah, they're doing okay. There you go. Not bad. And do some coffee or two to keep us nice and warm. Oh, only 20 of you guys can make it? That kind of sucks. Uh, you know, I'll cut you down to 10 then. Only 10 choppers and 10, uh, planes? Not great, but whatever. Alright, so after this, I wanted to do something else here, too. I want to keep going down this way. The Gilded Marshal. Him and Goring was no man of humble stature, always the one to flaunt his wealth. The old Reichsmarshal attempted to corrupt the Reich and the Führer for decades. With his delusional ambitions of grandeur and splendor, unfortunately for the people of Germany, Goring was a viciously charismatic character and infatuated both the Führer as well as of German Volk with his magnetism. He was so successful in endeavors that the late Führer had appointed this corrupt madman as Vez Kanzler, Reichsmarshal, and a successor. The German nation is lucky that his succession did not come to pass. Despite the high esteem the crooked aviator had in the eyes of many, he was not but a criminal who sought to enrich himself off the backs of the peoples of Europe, and succeeded in doing so through corrupting Adolf Hitler. We need only open the front gates of Karin Hall to the people to show the real reasons behind Goring's affinity for warfare. Lavish finery, world-class stolen artwork, exotic animal pelts, and any luxury that a man could dream of. It had been all found in Karin Hall, bought and paid for by the people of Europa and the German Volk. Hitler fell to the forest man's charm, and as such he had his way, pillaging the continent not like, unlike a savage warlord. And with that, the Americans will have their confession. Nice. Sehr gut. Unternehmen Vertrauen Report. Operational Sales Report. We have successfully falsified documents of purporting to the, from, be from various ministries of one of the emergent states. See Appendix A, the structure and identification of the emergent Russian superstates, suggesting multiple narratives of foreign collaboration with the non-German actors, alleging collaboration with Reich authorities and firms that have yet to, have been judged too likely of empowering extremist elements within the factions. See Appendix B, the Russians and the Reich, an analysis of recovered trans, uh, uh, transuralic propaganda. A list of suitable local candidates for dispersal have been located. See page 14. And the backgrounds are being vetted for signs of intelligence and affiliation by local homint assets. If a number of candidates are judged viable channels for dispersal, stage 3 will commence, see page 7, ensuring the leaks of the documents will coincide with the next phases of diplomatic negotiations between the emergent Russian states. It is hoped that ensuring scandal will interrupt the negotiations and perhaps lead the states down a path of mutual armed aggression. Note, at the suggestion of the Reich Chancellor, psychological, political, and racial profiles of the leadership of the Russian states has been included as appendices CD and E in order to help under better understand their agents, to best manipulate them should there be the need for targeted document falsification. All agents on the Russian desk are encouraged to read them if time allows. Fast friends fall fast. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Up next, um, the Far East, West Siberia. I think we already did West Siberia, so I don't hurt them again. Why can we not hurt these guys? I don't understand that. Why can we hit the WRF? And Deca satellites would not be bad. Let's do Far East then. Sure. The Gilded Marshal. Just keep spinning that PP for now, because it's so bad. I don't think we'll be able to get this one done, maybe. It takes, takes way too long to get enough command power. Way, 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 way too long. 
and scattered to the wind. Even if Simon Goring's corpse lay rotting in the soil, his legacy remains far too positive and far too grand in the German people's eyes. Our efforts to expose Goring as a traitor have been too timid, too simplistic. The public shall know henceforth that there is one man to blame for the decade of troubles ever since the collapse of the 50s, Goring, the treasonous Reichsmarschall. They shall know that he convinced the Fuhrer to burn the Reich's funds upon a behemoth military force. It was he who drove us into countless conflicts that would nearly bring the Reich to its knees. All of this, all so that he can enrich himself further with the spoils of war. In extension to a public campaign of humiliation, Karin Hall shall be open to the public for all to see his criminal splendor, and not to mention to the media who will have their orders. His reputation will be ground to dust. Good. Yes, increase commitment. For 50 political power, I will gladly take that one. Um, anything there? 90, 97.5%. Um, um, we're going to... Kill this one off as fast like this as possible. There we go. That just barely did anything. Jesus Christ. Alright, so that's so way here. Go, plain boys, go. There you go. You're gonna win here. Not bad. Pretty good. <sighs> Africa. Wait for these guys to move. Death to the cult of personality. You are still confident in the positive outcome of our dehitlerization, Herr Schmidt. We are experiencing a substantial opposition, asked the Fuhrer. The sound of angry protesters and even a few ha Hitlers can be heard not far from the Reichstag, which certainly help to illustrate Speer's skepticism. Yes, distancing ourselves from him is absolutely necessary, mein Fuhrer, replied a distant and distracted Schmidt. I need to go for a walk. Schmidt gave a timid but respectful salute to Speer and quickly exited the building. As he walked down the Adolf Hitler Strasse and past the Adolf Hitler Platz, Schmidt noticed the many lingering signs of war. Former soldiers aimlessly walking the streets, some with broken or missing limbs, and some begging for spare change, a fair deal of unemployed veterans, non-veterans too. And there are even some buildings that had left over damage from accidental shelling or bombing during the Burger Creek in which so many sacrificed so much simply for that cunning dude, Speer, to enact a slightly less brutal and genocidal version of his predecessor's ideology. Adolf Hitler was a man who brought so much unnecessary suffering and destruction to the world. How could the German masses revere him so much? Schmidt figured that he had to emphasize the world's fear and hatred of a man and avoid non-starters like this absurd racial beliefs and genocide. It was a ridiculous and unfair situation, but like always, Schmidt would just carry on and make the best of it. Trying to shape the future from the past could... Uh, from a past that could have been. Uh, oh, we're close again to doing that. Yeah, we're going to get this one done first. A new Reich. The Reich has taken a leap of faith from the shadowy darkness of the past into the light of a new day. Speer and his administration have successfully distanced themselves from the trust of both Hitler and a man, a man loathed by many nations across the world at large. With their open position on the late Fuhrer clear to all, we have shown the world a new Germany with new values. The boiling anger within the party is a threat to us all, but it may simmer down over time. The positive diplomatic consequences of our actions, however, shall last decades to come. Very good. Um, It's all okay there. We're good. So many factories, but realistically, not enough. Oh, that's not good. Whatever. Nice. You guys move super fast. You actually might be able to get to Muscat almost immediately. Or maybe not. Um, take a little land then. Can you get there before they do? Maybe. Yes. Is that good? Bait them in to attacking us, yes, yes. Can you actually overrun them? Oh, you cannot. That was so close, though. Oh, well, that's good. There you go. Oh, so close. Nice. Did we win yet? No, okay. Keep them in place, keep them in place. If you can win here fast enough. Oh. Yes. Very nice. There goes uh, Oman. So I have one more group to take out here. It's just like taking out the trash. Cut him down, cut him down. Anything else? Nope. Yeah, you do that one because you can. So why not? Cool. Let you get organized right there. More civvies again. Look at that. Just so many civvies. Look at all the roads we've built here. That's ridiculous, man. I mean, don't get me wrong, I enjoy it. I'm making one heck of an Autobahn around here, but, uh... Even anti-air. Well, we've got completely... Everything has... Almost every city here in Germany has anti-air. Uh, you might need it against the Russians eventually, eventually over there, so... Good luck, guys. Loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads. Poland, you might need that, too. My apologies for the cooking. 
Come on. You right? Very good, very good. Um, with you guys here, you both should be able to do this with you guys falling over to here. Death of President Ho Chi Minh, goodbye. Oh, that is painful to do every single time. There you go. They're gone now. Hey, a revolutionary victory in Oman. There you go. Uh, our guys left. Cool. We did really well. Actually, oh, let's do this immediately because we can. Oh, well, at least we still got the command, the PP for that. That's actually really good. Twenty, give it a day. I'm still gonna do this one. That oh, was only ten. That's not bad. Oh, we can't do that one yet. Four million. Oh, let's do this one first. There you go. Twenty percent is not bad. There you go. A new spinning image. All efforts have paid off. <clears throat> As we desperately hope, our desire to improve diplomatic relations with the wider world may soon be fulfilled. Many heads of state have praised Shibuya's position on Hitler to varying degrees of openness, and the foreign press that we have intensively studied are producing mostly positive coverage. Even the great beast of our West, the US of A, has responded well to Shibuya's administration distancing himself from Hitler, and the Republican Democratic Party is reportedly eyeing our certain er, surge in popularity with envy. We have presented a new face to the world, and it seems, looks like the world likes what it sees. I'm glad we got this last one before we had to keep doing it, so... Victory, victory. Notable. Anyone else? I'm, I'm more than happy to help. More than happy. Want to name him Blau. Ah, uh, yes. We have news that the Blue Division veterans in the warring Spain attempted to contact our operatives in order to request aid for the future endeavors. Although serving under the Falange's banner, the clique of Jose Luis de Ares desires to spread the light of national socialism and Iberian establish closer ties with the Reich, in contrast to the more reluctant Falange's superiors. Although the numbers are humble, their will is sincere and the, uh, ooh, oh, campaign ended, that sucks. Um, they can potentially, the offer appears to be promising. Should we enable them, they can potentially become an independent power in the wars unmatched by the degenerate offspring of the late Francoist regime. Not bad. Um, honestly, we got enough expertise already anyway, so. Technical expertise, we do have, not have enough for this. Um, there you go. Honestly, do we need to do this anymore? We're overwhelmingly reformist. So, I think we're kind of okay with even not doing it from now on. There goes those guys. Two giants together again. Um, it's evident that a new course will bring us in competition with the U.S. However, we want this to be a new kind of struggle, one made between nations who's, which respect each other and fought on the fat field of trade and industry with clear rules without people dying in a senseless war. In order to bring our nations together, we shall propose our former enemy a conference. This meeting to be held in Toronto will set the foundations for a rapprochement. And who knows? Perhaps the end of the embargo, which is slowly suffocating our economy? Yeah, at this point, I don't think doing this matters at all. And we can do we can do a lot of budget. Um, you can actually get more political power growth, too, here. Which is okay. Is it really worth it? Ah, uh, we can do it. Improve academic base. If you want to about that, please go right ahead. We have to wait for command power anyway, so there you go. Something to be celebrated. Not bad. Alright, I'll come back over here and do this one. Getting oh so closer. Oh so closer, man. Um we can't do any of this stuff yet, so we gotta wait. Um get more stability we don't really need. I'm feeling a lot of pressure coming on for this stuff. Establish the Reichsamt for Militaire Forschung. While the research aims to cover all fields of human knowledge, both civilian and military nature, it's evident that we need to establish a strong and efficient military research department. The Reichsamt for Militaire Forschung, or Reich's Military Research Bureau, will be a centralized office tasked with coordinating and subsidizing all kinds of military innovations, from common guns to the last frontier of computers and electronic espionage. To this end, the RFM shall keep contact with the major military organizations of the Reich, from the Ministry for De of the Defense to the Secret Services, so they may cater to the exact needs of our armed forces and our southern means to defend the Vaterland. The Vaterland. Seriously, so how do we get more command power? Oh, we need more PP. Oh, we did that one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The invitation. Mr. President, I hope this letter finds you well. One of the silver linings of our civil war, as I'm sure your people are inclined to agree, is the opportunity for New Germany to rise from the ashes and mend the wounds our forebears have created. Included amongst the mistakes of Hitler's Reich was the alienation of our nations from yours. Historically, our people have been like brothers, and our lands have exchanged populations many times, even in the recent past. Where does your beloved Hamburger come from but our own migrants, your Frankfurt? Where did our national spirit, born in the fires of 1848, come from but the revolutionary fervor of your own war of independence? 
It is a fear's wish that our countries might find common ground once more, a discussion of differences at the least, and perhaps a partnership that could extend well into the future. As I'm sure you'll agree, Mr. President, the world is rapidly changing with the collapse of alliances, discord in Africa, and reemergence of an unpredictable Japan. The better friends we have, the better chance our world has of persevering. Uh, persevering. I hope this can become a dialogue between our office and yours. We look forward to your reply with great interest. Helmut Schmidt, Reich Minister for Foreign Affairs. With bated breath, we will wait. And I'm going to actually do this first. We're not going to do this one yet. We're going to give it 10 days because I want to get that political power as much as possible so that we can get more command power immediately because we have four a day without doing a focus, which is super, super nice. But with order collapsing in Egypt, this is not good. Which support do we, which side do we like? Not you. Good, 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 sad, good. Nice. Oh, up to 60. Nice. Come on, give us just one more. I we need that command power. Yes. It's minus four right now, but it doesn't matter. As long as we got the command power, that's all I really fucking care about right now. Actually, could I send some guys to anyone else? I mean, this is really who we wanted to help out anyway. So, um, yeah, that's fine. Whatever. The times are there, and that's what we gotta get rid of. So, um, Yemen, are you okay there? Are you are you okay? These guys are killing each other. It's fine. I don't really care. Nothing there too. Cool. Americans say yes. Helmut had held that letter in front of him as though it were a trophy, and perhaps it was, but there was also a great challenge. Still, Schmidt was a capable man. Excellent work, Helmut. The other members of the cabinet gave the foreign minister a polite round of applause. Stifled coughs interrupted the backslapping, an unavoidable consequence of Schmidt's ashtray filled with cigarettes, along with Earhart's seemingly endless cigar. Speer waved his hand at his secretary, who scrambled to open a window. Where do you intend to hold this meeting? I imagine there'll be some back and forth about that. Somewhere neutral would, be, would have been preferred if such a place even exists these days. Iceland, perhaps? So, if we push, we could get them to visit Hamburg. It didn't come out of the war too badly. I'll but suppress the urge to mention the obvious fact that it was also Schmidt's home. He supposed the man could be excused a moment of vanity. If capable as Schmidt was, Speer had been uncertain of his ability to achieve this meeting. There always seemed to be something the man had been holding back, however. Some fire in his eyes. Perhaps this, this was his chance to show it. Then I wish you luck with the Americans. No doubt you shall need it. The cabinet gave a polite chuckle. I do not rely on luck. And, but I do rely on coffee. Oh, it's looking so good now. So much better. Conference of Global Security and Cooperation. Let's do this first. Helmut's long-awaited moment had arrived. He leaned against the balcony and gazed over the city lights of the city. Not a bad view, and certainly a welcome change from Berlin's, Germania's, hey, he mentally corrected himself, progressively more ugly skyline. This place might not have been the Führer's first choice for the summit, but Schmidt had managed to persuade him of the sense of the location without saying too much of the true reason. Speer would have wanted them brought straight to Germania to see his Volkshalle. The Führer thought himself a humble man, but how he could stand to see that bulging growth of national arrogance every day, Helmut could not understand. The Americans would not like it as much as they loved their monuments, plus it was a bad word breezing in there. Uh, freezing in there. The door opened behind them. The Reich's minister turned and gave a nod before the messenger could speak. The Americans had arrived. Helmut ground his cigarette into the ashtray that rested on the windowsill. It certainly was an amazing view. The lights of the old city, uncorrupted by the colossal yet crumbling architecture that seemed to define the Reich's recent history. He turned to the door as either voices began to carry up the corridor and reached into his jacket and pulled out another cigarette. Friends and Americans, a pleasure to meet you. Now that peepee. -pee. We're going to use that immediately. Now we could use this here again because it's so close, so I want to use the command power for something else, though. So. There you go. Uh, let's wait, uh, at least for one of these, uh, one, 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 uh, uh, we'll do it here. This will have slightly more effects, so then we'll do this one, and do it anyways, why not, screw it. 75% super high, so, Conference of Global Security and Cooperation. The negotiations had continued off and on for several days. The Americans had played remarkably coy with their demand so far, but only a fool would have let the proceedings begin without an idea of what the Americans would demand at the end. In fact, it was unpredictable how unpredictable they were being. Everyone here had clearly learned from the same playbook, which made it all the easier to dance between them with unspoken promises and tie them in with knots with double meanings. Rex Minister Schmidt hit, lit his third cigarette of the evening. The brief had rushed it, provided him, gave as much clarity as it seemed to sap from everyone else in 
the room. The Americanos gave one another an unspoken message that was more of a scream. He had known what they would ask for four days ago, since those had just been to decide what he was willing to give. It was a difficult game, one where neither his own government nor the opposition could know his goals, thus so far, however, it was all going, to, going according to plan. In order to resume official diplomatic relations between our nations, Dowling coughed, there must be some concessions. Schmidt took another drag and gestured for him to continue. Number uno. Nuclear priority must be maintained, but overall stockpiles must be reduced. An overall reduction in worldwide nuclear stockpiles is essential to maintaining peace. Number two. The institution of forced labor in Germany is unacceptable, and while current efforts to end it are recognized, the rights of the workers must be improved until workers can be repatriated. Number three. World trade must be renormalized, and trade between our nations will go a long way towards that. Another drag so predictable. Schmidt had considered this days ago. He ground a cigarette into the ashtray to the obvious relief of his counterpart and said, We should consider a mutual nuclear reduction. Not bad, not bad. A guarantee of rights of, of involuntary workers. America will always be the first choice for our markets. Americans of slavery and slaves go together like biscuits and gravy. <laughs> more options. Um, what are the more options? Less nukes and open markets make two happier countries. Slaves' rights will be assured along with the safety of the world. We can see to all demands. We will not give away our hard-earned victories. Um, oh, why not? We have agreed to all demands. We have accepted all of the American demands to reduce our nuclear stockpile to allow American companies first trade rights in our country, and yes, even allowing more rights for the slaves. It's not an ideal situation, but nothing in this world is. The hardliners back home are sure to be in uproar. The only shining light is that the Americans are ecstatic with us, promising an end to the embargo in the coming months. We have that, at least. Well, okay, that's not too bad. Uh, can I increase the commitment yet here yet? I would love to do so. Honestly, we already have 100% because I kept clicking on this one. Screw it, we'll do it one more time because we can. Why not, right? Um, Not bad. It's weird. I've never done these uh, negotiations before. Hmm. We're going to need 50 more political power, though. We've got to keep an eye on that. Why do we have 20? Um, hide, hide, no. Why do we have 20 here? Is it just because of all this stuff? It's probably just because of all this stuff down here. Screw it. I'm going to go do this one anyways, just because I want to get rid of the 20 here. So there you go. That looks a little better for me. All right, so we're at 30 again. Got to go down naturally. Um, Do that one first. We'll do it here. There you go. Oh, civilian construction? Thank goodness. Alrighty, I know this video is kind of long. I mean, all these videos I'm doing are long, uh, which is fine with me, actually. I don't really care too much. Um, I I'm enjoying this. I'm finally enjoying this campaign. The first half of the campaign it was okay, or the first third, I should say. The two videos in the middle, or two or three videos in the middle, just really pissed me off a lot because it was, it was god awful doing it, but whatever. And uh, yeah, I don't know if we can actually win there. When are our guys going to show up? There we go, finally. I ask and we shall receive. Who are we fighting? I guess we're gonna fight these guys. Um, you guys can probably just go and have a good. Oh boy. Or we'll take you guys. Just go up here. Well, that kind of sucked. Um, hiring space. Oh, I'll go down here. Oh, yes. Um, more rights for slaves? Sure. Another agreement has been made, and that concerns our former property. What the Americans called slaves we shall treat more kindly, and hopefully that should show to them that we're more than willing to do what is right. After all, that is something we wish to do too. Let's just hope they don't rub that in our faces too much. Did they just... Oh, they didn't kill off one of our divisions. Okay, that's good. You just go in here and go there maybe if you can. There we go. Kill them off so we can save that division, maybe. Maybe, 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 maybe. Keep that pee-pee. Keep that pee-pee. Well, we're going to spend it right now, anyways. I'll go over here. There we go. Not bad. Um, Save the pee-pee for now, except for you. That one's okay. The other one's just a little too difficult for us to get to use right now. Um, honestly, come up here, too. Oh, hold, hold, hold. Do not lose. Do not lose. Get your butts in there. Why are you taking so long? Oh, yeah. I get there's four divisions in there, but still. 
and then first in trade. It's a big sacrifice for anyone to let go of the first of everything they own or earn, and for a Reich, it's going to be our own sacrifice to let the Americans have a taste of the resources we now possess. Surely, while this means great reward for us, it should too mean that our new American friends will benefit. Guys, why did you lose? Uh, where are the choppers? These guys are really annoying. Um, yes. No questions about it. And here we'll do that. They're done. We need political power to do that one. This one needs 10 political power, so give us one more day. And if all you start cutting this area down too. That's good. Can you guys actually win down here? You don't have enough range for this, do you? Oh, here we go. Now we can go to 100 each. Thank God. No, just gonna hang out then. Alright, Toronto Accords. Turn back the Doomsday Clock. We've made a very important decision, and this should not cost us more. We shall see to it that our nuclear arsenal is reduced, and that our capabilities shall be regulated. It is a serious compromise indeed, but it should, would be one great step towards getting the Americans to become more friendly with us. Anything here yet? No? No? Okay. On to the Mishvet report. R&D agents have successfully infiltrated, um, I think I read this one, so basically the same thing. So if you want to read that, please go ahead. A success in the snow. Nice. Hunting him in Blau. Oh, regime leaning must be conservative or neutral. Okay, we can't take that one. I uh, can't take that one either, huh? Okay. Nothing over here, too. Central America? And Tucker satellites, nothing down here, nothing down there. Middle East, no. Kind of a... Cool, cool we did. East Asia, how about Southeast Asia? Zing Vogel, uh, if you want to do that, please go right ahead. Let's go in. I'm a little disappointed that we can't do anything here now. Oh, now they're attacking us, which kind of makes sense. That's the case. I'd rather have you retreat this way, so. Oh, what? Wait, how? Oh, we lost that one. Defeat. Well, that sucks. Yeah, we can maybe still help these guys out. I don't know. I might replay this a little bit and just do things um down there as well. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, Toronto Accords. With the great conference ended and resounding success, we can now proudly say that we have opened a new era for our two countries. The US of A and the Grosse Germanisches Reich are now gr bound by their own agreement to face each other in friendly and regulated competition, and to always seek out a diplomatic solution to any problem that may arise. With the Toronto Accords, our economy are once more soaring to the skies and the German people will understand how righteous our cause was. Let this be the final gravestone on the mad dreams of those who try to stop us. Very good. I'm going to keep that peepee -pee there to get some more command power as well, so. Bribe political enemies? I mean, we could. We really wanted to. The Deutsche Physik. As any good German should know, Mein Kampf teaches that the tendrils of Judaism are deeply rooted in the entire world, fearing open confrontation with the master Aryan race. The despicable lot tries to gain the upper hand through cunning guile. Jewish personalities are embedded in all sectors of society. From banks to industry to science, the amount of people openly or covertly swearing their allegiance to the six-pointed star of David and Judas is staggering. As such, it's only natural that the relatively new field of physics would immediately be infected with such a plague. From Einstein to uh, Fermi. Uh, the false doctrine of ju judicia physique has tried to subvert science from the inside, spreading false beliefs on how the very fabric of the world was structured. It was only a matter of time before the true Aryans would try to cleanse universities and scientific institutions from this filth and replace it with the true science, the Aryan science. From this college of national pride and racial superiority was Deutsche Physik born, a titanic effort aimed at replacing the decadent and corrupt judicia. Judicia physique with a doctrine that truly answered the great questions of our time. However, National Socialism wasn't alone in its quest for truth, and many already tried, even on their own, to refute such false beliefs on the grounds of Aryan rationality. From Hans Hobbinger's Glazial Cosmolo uh, Cosmogony in 1912, many other enlightened intellectuals, such as Nobel laureates Philip Lennard and Johannes Stock, understood the need to compile and organize a pure scientific community along the party approved line of Gleichschaltung, a hierarchical coordination based on adherence to the official doctrine of National Socialism. So magniloquent. Mmm. Good stuff. Anything up here? No, still 100%. Defeat? Well, we'll see about that. Home of the Brave. Now, this one's interesting because you got the Grand Old Republic. This old house, this is more conservative. Land of the free gives you more political power. A way to further increase the relationships with the U.S. Helmut Schmidt has proposed a tour of the East Coast, which during which he will meet and fraternize with the higher echelons of American politics and government. This should help us achieve further benefits with the new partners. In the end, the Führer has agreed to this proposal, and it allowed the minister to visit all landmarks he desires as long as the mayor can agree. While this is surely to spark controversies within the Reich, as Schmidt will surely visit sites linked with the slave struggle for freedom. In the end, our leader preferred to keep the gang of four content. What, what, are you saying like that they rule the group here? Are you saying they rule the group? I'll keep an eye on this middle one because it's actually really, really helpful for all that stuff. So, um, back over here. 
And we're not quite there yet. Oh, there we go. Yes. Now we only have two places that need reduction. Only two places. 10 PP max, sometimes. The Grand Scientific Council of Germania. For almost three decades, Deutsch Physik was a proverbial stone guest of all scientific meetings in the Reich. While the overwhelming majority of all academic institutions believe that such theory with the same fervor, a policeman believes the excuses of someone caught pickpocketing. They were forced to keep their criticism for themselves, as the Deutsche Physik had been officially embraced by the NSDAP. And counter personalities such as Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler themselves, among its staunchest supporters, to denounce its falsehood meant being branded as uh, Judenfreunde, and subsequently purged. As such, an uneasy peace had been struck between the universities and the party leadership. The former would be abstained from openly refuting the theory, while the latter would abstain from sending the most esteemed professors to the concentration camps as enemies of the state, especially since their minds were needed for the war effort more than their arms would be needed in the, any slave factory. After Himmler's exile and, Hit and Hitler's death, and with a new Führer set on a more moderate approach to science and politics, and scientific community is once more in upheaval, and many feel that the day of reckoning has finally come. A scientific council has been convened in Germany, where the most prominent academics from the entire Reich will be present to discuss the future of science in this new era for Germany and the world. Even more importantly, the opening event will be a strong official rebuttal of the entire doctrine of Deutsche Physik to be branded as delirium, inspired by racial hate and intellectual deficiency. In its place, the council will ask for the scientific community to be regulated by merit and experience, rather than bootlicking and party allegiance. Is that the right time for such a change? Is it really the right time for this? Thank you. Oh, yes, please. Increase our commitment. We'll get that one next. Oh, good. We still have about Yemen, so that's not too bad. A house divided? Yes, please. Oh, more ship rolls? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Thank you. Oh, where's the uh, planes? Ah. Oh, god dang it. Now back down to 60. And. Boom. There we go. Good luck. That's so bad. Oh, my goodness. Sens or sensibility. As predicted, the news of a Grand Scientific Com Council of Germania has created an uproar in the NSAP, with the reformers welcoming an opportunity to finally let go of another part of Hitler's embarrassing legacy and the conservatives accusing the Scientific Council of going against party doctrine, which in their opinion is akin to high treason. Already, letters are piling on the Fuhrer's desk, asking him to officially support one side or the other, and the amount is getting close to the alarm threshold. Should Speer refuse to take action, it will be interpreted as a sign of weakness and he can't afford such a thing. Forced to take action, the Fuhrer stops to reflect. Preventing the council from happening is absolutely out of the question as it will enrage universities that were his first and largest support base during the Bürgerkrieg and now are the fundamental pillar upon which to build a new Reich, filling the technological gaps separating the country from the other world powers. As it stands, there are only two possible choices. The first is to cave in to the conservatives, while angering the scientists, which would mean completely ignoring the council and act as if it never happened. A safe choice in difficult times. The second is to openly support the reformists and attending the council in person, thus sending a clear message to everyone about the new course for the Reich is being set on. What will his decision be? Yeah, attendance is mandatory. A new science for the new Reich. Well, we gotta go that way. For now. Get that pee pee. Get that pee pee. More commitment, more commitment, more commitment. Oh, Sudan? Nah, whatever. I don't care about Sudan. Sudan's really crappy to fight in. A house divided. As expected, Reich's Minister Schmidt visited the Lincoln Memorial and has been photographed proudly shaking hands with the reform aligned liberals of the American political sphere. While his views on the current policies undertaken by the Reich is largely known by everybody, turning the international stage into a megaphone for his personal ideals will surely have consequences. Still, one cannot deny that this further pleased the government of the U.S. and its people will now see Germany as a place striving to grant freedom to everyone. However, it remains to see whether such hopes will become reality. The Toronto Accords end. Uh, Toronto Accords. That's a faction in the Thousand Week Reich. Nice. To a new era. That's actually really cool. Is that from like the 30s or something? I don't know. Or maybe that's from the 30s. I have no idea. Oh, maybe I should, just, I should click that button. Alright. Nice. Southeast Asia. Russia is probably next, really, realistically, so. Yes. Spend that money. That doesn't cost anything. Actually, that should, honestly, these decisions here for initiatives. In my opinion, it should cost more than $50 million. They should probably, at least in my opinion, maybe they should cost more. Just because, like, that's really, that's way too cheap, in my opinion. But, you know, who am I? I'm just a dude on the internet. Um, this is way, way too many slaves. Do that one first. There you go. Very good. Oh, certain success. It was a success. The gods let him in the chemical plant with no problem, and that's all left for Herrick. 
to do was to inspect the equipment once he was left alone. He planted the bomb and set the time, something it was running out of. Any minute now, the charges Eric had placed within the arms cache would explode, and that would be an awkward position. He walked outside with alacrity and panic bounding with his gait. Any minute now, any minute. He said farewell to the guards that kept watch over the place, saying that the equipment was to keep the satisfactory standards. One of them chuckled and said that he would beat the slave census if they hadn't. He turned back on them, and his walk turned into a trot before accelerating into a gallop at the quickest pace of the nearest forest. It was a very close run, and close run thing, and Eric did not even turn after the camp exploded and burnt behind him. Reaching the edge of the woods, Eric looked back and saw the fires rising high to the night sky, almost like a second sun. He withdrew a cigarette from his coat pocket and smoked it a job well done high. Oh crud. Oh boy. That doesn't sound very good for us. Not at all. This is 29%, that's not too bad. We do have quite a bit of peeping out. Schmidt in DC. The final stop of his goodwill tour. Four minutes that uh, Schmidt has arrived in DC. From what you've heard from a staff who's present with the German delegation, the uncontested highlight of the visit for Mr. Schmidt was at the top of the admittedly very lovely Lincoln Memorial. Despite the supposedly much more impressive works and exhibits of Germania, Schmidt was apparently memorized by the statue and stood silently in its presence for several minutes. According to one staffer who was known to embellish his stories, a single teardrop could even be seen in Mr. Schmidt's eyes. Either way, he seemed to be very much appreciate the memorial and get the great American values it stood for. The Nazi foreign minister admires Lincoln, probably a good sign. Depending on your opinion of politics. I guess our soldiers are in Yemen already, so I'll close out of that for now. Once more into the fray, my friends. Which I'll probably go back and actually save, uh, well, I mean, it's telling you, but whatever. Save, uh, Egypt. Look at those boys fly. Oh, you're getting attacked, huh? Oh, yeah, look at those guys. They're still trying to get over here. Kind of wild, not gonna lie. House divided, a stranger meeting. Finally, after all of our efforts to woo the Americans, a German diplomat will meet with the President of the U.S. It's been a long road to this point, full of trials and torment, but we are here, and that's what matters now. The diplomat in charge of this historic meeting is Helmut Schmidt, the Reich's best man for the job. If the meeting goes as planned, the President and Schmidt will sign a treaty that will bring about a new age upon the world, one of peace and economic stability. I hope we don't get encircled here. Actually, we should make these divisions even bigger. I'll be honest, I should have made these guys bigger. Schmidt and the Lincoln Memorial. This was perhaps one American landmark Schmidt had seen whose scope even held a candle to the landmarks of Germania. And yet somehow the Lincoln Memorial put the massive statues and displays of Germany's capital to shame. While the ancient Greek-style building and the huge statue of Abraham Lincoln were by no means simple, the memorial could hardly be considered elaborate or covered in interesting details to examine. But all the pieces together, the dimly lit but notable noble Lincoln sitting pleasantly in his chair, overlooking the steps leading down towards the reflecting pool on the Washington Monument in the distance, it evoked this feeling inside of Schmidt. It was longing. Longing for better days, simpler times, and for leaders with as much honor and integrity as they used to have. No German politician valued liberty openly the way Abraham Lincoln did. Uh, some people might have qualms with that. Why did those who in charge today e even care so darn much about what individuals said or did in the privacy of their own home or in the confidence of loved ones and friends? It was both immensely perplexing and free-writing to Schmidt, and then he realized what he had longed for the f most, a free and just world. And yes... That is because it is simple and easy. Though I admit the world would be pretty boring if there was nothing I could do to make it a better place. Abraham Lincoln did not reply to Schmidt, but surely he would approve. And make it a better place, I shall. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, Lincoln wasn't per- I mean, it could have been a lot worse, but it just depends on your uh, opinion. F future perfect. At the end of the Civil War, the Reich was the laughingstock of the world, a textbook case of what happens to an empire built upon war, exploitation of the weak, and isolationism. Now this has changed in our countries at the forefront of international cooperation. The embargo which has strangled our economies no more, and we enter the world stage with our heads high, held high. Thanks to Schmidt's work, and despite his sometimes extreme views, our economy can help finally flourish, as our ports fill with ships from foreign lands and our industries sell the goods to the entire world. This is a new Gross Deutsches Reich, a prosperous land filled with opportunities, a country respected inside and outside by all, an empire which the son of the National Socialism shall never set. I think that would be the last one we're going to do here. I just do want to see if there's any other event we can read after the current book is, is finished, though. Nice, nice. Oh, we can do it twice. Oh, that is tasty. If that's the case, go over... Oh, oh there go those guys. Riada. Yay, we cut them off. For now. Riyadh. Cool. Not bad. Mm. 
No, hold for now. That's fine. Get some more organization first. All right, not bad. I mean, we even cut down like military spending and stuff. So, um, they're completely circled. A strange meeting. Schmidt meets the president. We'll give peace a chance. But I think that's going to be us, the end of us for here today. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I will see you tomorrow when I might replay this just a little bit to make sure e Egypt goes along with us. And hopefully we'll be able to dismantle the final mega corporation, Ajifab. And thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.